discussed how to set the idle base position table, uh, which is just the open loop uh, set point for airflow versus uh, coolant temperature. We've already talked about how to configure the uh, idle feedback settings so that the uh, feedback uh, works to get the engine RPM uh, close to your target idle position. One other thing that you can do here is you can use uh, ignition trims. Uh, this is one table of how to do it and there are another way to, to adjust ignition timing as well. So the uh, first thing we want to do is we want to open the idle wizard and disable our uh, airflow feedback while we're making these adjustments. So I'm going to set feedback min to zero, set feedback max to zero. Uh, notice that the uh, engine RPM went up because our feedback was previously uh, negative in order to get the RPM uh, down to the target. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> make some changes to the to the base idle position right now in order to get us back uh, closer to the uh, idle target. Similar to how um, airflow and uh, air fuel ratios make a difference in horsepower on a, on a dyno, spark timing can also make a difference in horsepower. If if you adjust uh, horsepower at idle, then you're basically going to make the engine uh, RPM change as well. So this ignition trim idle table is uh, is just one other trim that can affect the uh, spark timing uh, based on the uh, difference in the uh, engine speed versus the idle target. Uh, it's pretty important for uh, idle trims that your main ignition map be set to about the same number uh, in the cells that the our engine is going to idle in. So. This is a vacuum below atmosphere and low RPM up to about 1600, which is what we set for cold idle. So with all of our other trims disabled, uh, the way to find what numbers to put in this table is basically to grab the entire table, all the cells, and give it some extra timing and watch what the RPM does. So what we're trying to do now is, is find the relationship between ignition timing trim and uh, engine speed uh, change. So I'm going to give this about five degrees extra ignition timing and we can see the RPM went up a little bit. Uh, it went from about a thousand to about a thousand seventy. I'm going to give it about ten degrees, so five more. <clears throat> now we're about a hundred RPM above our target. Let's go up, up, up to fifteen degrees. Now we're at about 150 RPM extra. Twenty degrees extra. Uh, didn't do much, much change. Uh, and we can watch what the um, what the effects of this trim are on our on our total spark timing, which is uh, after all the trims, right here. So now we're at a total of uh, 30 degrees ignition timing. Uh, so that's 10 from our base map and uh, 20 degrees because of idle trims. So we can drop this back down to 10 degrees. Watch what the engine speed does. Down to 5 degrees. Engine speed drops a little bit more. Down to 0 degrees trim. Uh, which puts our spark timing back at our original uh, ignition map numbers. Now you, you may have noticed that between 10 and 20 degrees there wasn't a big change, so we might not use 20 degrees in our uh, final numbers in this table. Uh, and now for removing ignition timing that should make less horsepower and it should drop our engine speed down, so let's go 5 less and we dropped engine speed by 25 or 50 RPM, 10 less we dropped by about 100, maybe a little over 100 RPM. 15 less, we're at uh, nearly nearly 200 RPM below our target. 20 degrees less, we still dropped uh, some RPM. So, so that's that's how ignition timing can affect this particular engine. Uh, different engines might be more sensitive uh, or less sensitive to ignition timing, and that's the sort of thing that you need to know before you just punch numbers into this table. If we were to look at the uh, the values in this table, they're all set to zero right now, uh, but as we are above or below our target, this table will run through the different cells and we can put different numbers in there to, uh, to try and minimize our error. So if the RPM error is high, that means that we are above the target. So right now we're about 25 RPM above the target, so we're sitting in this cell of, of our table. Uh, and if we're too high, we want to get the engine RPM down, so we would put uh, negative numbers in this table, because we saw earlier that's that's how uh, to affect engine speed was was uh, if we use negative numbers here, the engine RPM would go down. We'll put bigger negative numbers 
uh, as the RPM error gets gets uh, larger. And on the other side of this table, if we want to raise the engine RPM because it's too low, we would put positive numbers on that side of the table. I'm going to go 5 and then 15 if we get too far off, off of the target. And now to test how well this table is working, uh, we can do things like change our idle target RPM from 1000 down to say 900. And you can watch that it's using these numbers in the table to try and drop the engine speed. Uh, notice we didn't make any change to idle position or idle airflow feedback. Um, all this change is because of the, the difference in spark timing. So if we tried 800 RPM for our target, again we haven't changed uh, airflow. Uh, this is just the effects of running off of these cells. Now, if it, And if we were to put larger negative numbers in here, maybe it would uh, go further. Uh, or if we wanted to, yeah, if we wanted to set these numbers further down, we can get it closer to zero error. If you make too large of a change in this table, the engine tends to hunt. So um, that's something to consider here. On a car that uh, didn't have any um, idle airflow control, you may be able to get acceptable idle behavior by uh, by using these ignition trim idle settings. Oftentimes you will need to make some sort of a compromise in terms of it might need to idle a little bit too high when it's warm or a little bit too cold, um, a little bit too low when it's cold. Some people are willing to uh, hold the throttle to keep the engine alive uh, when it's cold. That's, that's not something that I'm a fan of, but uh, some people are willing to do that in order to get their engine bay a little bit simplified or their wiring harness a little bit uh, fewer connectors on it. We can turn feedback back on and just double check that everything's working as we expect it to still. So our feedback min was originally set to negative 15. Our feedback max was originally set to positive 15. And so we can watch what happens if we were to stop a log, start a new log. If we were to change our engine uh, idle target here to 900, notice that the ignition timing happens quite quickly compared to the feedback. So what you'll usually find is that uh, for small changes the ignition timing is going to react quickly and for uh, larger changes the idle feedback uh, for airflow is eventually going to uh, do its job and get the RPM to the target. Let's go up to 1200 RPM here as a target. And there you can see the, the ignition trim for uh, idle was almost immediate and then the feedback eventually did some work there as well. So one last thing that I would like to double check uh, before calling this car done and saying that we're finished uh, working with the idle tuning is I would usually uh, make sure that you get the RPM above your idle feedback limits and watch how it comes down to idle. So for instance, I'm going to give it some throttle, get the RPM to a few thousand RPM, let go throttle down to zero and watch that when it falls down to idle it doesn't drop below your target or try and stall. Uh, these settings worked pretty well. As an example of settings that would not work well, I happen to know on this car that if we take 10% uh, away from our idle uh, base position table, you'll run into a situation like this where if you weren't watching feedback and just listening to RPM or watching RPM versus target, you could say this car is idling well. Uh, the RPM is very close to target. It's relatively smooth. It it's, uh, sounds like a car that's working well. Uh, until you disable feedback by giving it some RPM, in this case, when it drops down to idle, it's going to drop too low uh, because it was relying on feedback to get the RPM correct. Um, so relying on positive idle feedback to get the RPM correct is, a, is a, not going to result in a car that, that uh, drives well and behaves good. Now on the other side of that, if we were to go up from our original settings, 10 more, so this is this is 10% more than our original settings, so the idle feedback is always negative. Uh, again, the RPM is more or less where we want it to be, and now if we give the engine some RPM and watch it come down to idle, that one if you look carefully it took a little bit longer to get down to the exact idle RPM 
um, but that means that it's a few steps away from wanting to stall. So that's that's a it's safer to have a little bit too high of a base position than a little bit too low of a base position. Uh, let's double check and demonstrate if we are too far off. If we go too far overboard on idle base position, you can actually get into a situation where the uh, idle feedback is not kicking in because the RPM never goes low enough. So let's try this and see how it goes. This was 10 more, so 20 more than what, what uh, the car needed to idle well. And now here we can see that the RPM is hanging too high. Uh, it turns out that 60% on this car is enough to keep our RPM at a few hundred RPM above our target, um, and that's enough that the feedback never kicks in and does its work. So you don't want to go overboard increasing the base position to make sure that the engine doesn't stall because then you could have a car that uh, where the idle sort of uh, tends to hang and that's not not to, not usually desirable either so these numbers of five or ten above the target on this particular car seem to work pretty well so I'm going to put that back this is a uh, this is now about five percent higher than our uh, original tuned numbers and that comes down to idle pretty well so that is it for um, all of our idle discussion. The, the key takeaway here is first you tune the base position, uh, open loop with all your feedback disabled. Then you tune the feedback um, and make sure that the closed loop uh, airflow is getting your RPM uh, close to the target without overshooting. And then after that you would make some adjustments to your ignition trim idle, uh, again with feedback disabled so that you watch the effects of just one thing at a time. So I hope that uh, series of idle videos has helped you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them here on the YouTube channel. Uh, you can also email questions to our infinity support at aempower.com email address. Thank you.